The following article is from the League of Revolutionary Struggle, Marxist Lanius. The Struggle for Chicano Liberation. This video is in response to a comment I received on TikTok. I'd say it's much more dangerous to call North America Athlan since there's Native American folks who had that land first. I appreciate this comment. This is actually really important and easy to answer with a little theory. Just to clarify, Chicanos don't consider the entirety of North America as Athlan. As seen in my intro, it includes the southwest part of the United States or what used to be Mexican territories before the imperialist Mexican-American War. Some Chicanos simply view Atlan as a spiritual guide force rather than an actual location. Atlan has been used for Chicanos to connect with the heritage and past. But most Chicanos, like myself, call for self-determination for the Chicano nation in Atlan, up to and including the right to succession. Let's begin. The Chicano people have a 400 year history in the Southwest, during which they developed into a nation, a historically evolved stable community of people formed on the basis of a common language, territory, economic life, and psychological makeup manifested in a common culture. Chicanos have lived in the areas now called Southern California, Southwestern Arizona, New Mexico, Southern Colorado, and southwestern Texas. This was then part of the Northern Territory of Mexico, at that time a colony of Spain. Most of the inhabitants of these early settlements were mestizos, mixed Spanish and Indian heritage, who labored as feudal peons, aka serfs, on the large farms, ranches, and missions of the feudal Spanish ruling class. During the 300 years of Spanish rule, the inhabitants of the area developed a common language and culture. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, I also want to mention that me being a Marxist and a communist, I also acknowledge the long history of Native American tribes who faced similar, if not the same exact oppression that most Chicano Mesitos people faced. Let's continue. An important part of the history of the Southwest is that of different Native American peoples in the area. Native Americans traced their history in the Southwest back for thousands of years. They have withstood the attempts of both Spain and the United States to exterminate them. All of their lands have been stolen and they have no political rights. Many of them have been forced onto reservations which resemble concentration camps and which are run completely by the U.S. government without any regards for the rights, customs, or sentiments of the native peoples. During the course of their long history, the different Native American peoples have developed their own distinctive national characteristics. At the same time, their common experience of oppression and their common struggle against it has created a common bond of solidarity amongst the various native nationalities. The native nationalities, like the Chicano nationality, have also been denied their national rights and are waging a struggle for their complete national liberation from U.S. imperialism. So basically, Chicanos and Native Americans and tribes in that area share a common struggle. They share a common enemy, which I don't see it's wrong for them to either, you know, join forces but if native american tribes do not want to join forces that's fine 
That's why this next part will be coming up and we'll be talking about self-determination for these Native American tribes. You know, I am a Marcellinist, I am a communist. So um, that's why this next part is very crucial, it's very important. Everything that I'm saying in this part also applies to the Native American tribes in occupied Turtle Island. Let's continue. To do these things, i.e. liberate the Chicano nation and Native American nations, it is necessary to uphold the right of self-determination for the oppressed Chicano nation and Native American nations. This right means that the Chicano nation has the right to determine its own destiny, free the force or coercion of another nation. The Chicano nation may decide to succeed and form its own state. It may decide to federate with Mexico or even with the United States. In any other case, only the Chicano people have the right to determine the future of their nation. While communists uphold the right of self-determination, they must evaluate how it is to be exercised accordingly to the concrete conditions which exist at the time. The state of the revolutionary movement in the United States and Mexico, international conditions, the strengths of the different forces in the Chicano national movement, amongst other, are factors which must be taken into account. I really do appreciate you bringing up that topic. It is a very important topic. Um, trust that we are not not trying to erase any Native American tribes or any, uh, you know, Native American nations that are currently in those areas or that were, um, that held land in those areas. Um, they will have the right to self-determination. They could work with Atlan. They could get their land back and just, just be completely autonomous. So, yeah, I mean, if you'd like to learn more, if you'd like to read more, if if you have any questions, please leave them below. I do appreciate everybody in here. Um, and if you've uh, you know, lasted this long, then W. Um, Viva la clase trabajadora. Viva Atlan. Viva Chicanos. I'm out.